Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to be talking about custom member profiles, how you can use the Wix member area app as a basis, and on top of that, build your own system for managing members using your own collections and your own UI. We'll be talking about how to build a dashboard where the users can create and update their profiles and how to display those profiles to other users using dynamic pages. It's going to be a low code tutorial, so it'll mostly be no code with a few code snippets here or there just to tie everything together. So if you want to learn how to do all that and more, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. And here I am on a completely blank uh, Wix website. This is the classic Wix editor or Wix editor. And everything I'm going to be showing you today is applicable to both the Wix editor and to Wix Studio. Uh, obviously, things might look a little different. So like button icons might look different and where you find specific things. But in terms of what you can do, it's all almost identical. There's one small thing that has to do with data sets that is quite different inside of Wix Studio that I'll be pointing out on a Studio website just so that you could follow along no matter what editor you're in. So I hope that you have your site ready, whether it's empty or not. And the first thing that we're going to do in order to create our custom members area or member profiles is to install the Wix members area app. And the reason we're going to do this, even though we're not going to be using any of the UI, we're still going to be using that infrastructure for authentication. So for allowing our users to sign up and log in and know who is a member, who is not, and if they're logged in or not, everything else we'll be building on top of that ourselves. So let me go ahead up here to the upper left where it says add elements. Uh, sorry, not... <laughs> Rewind. Let me go over here to where it says add apps. Okay, so right over down here. And I'm going to install the Wix uh, members area app. So members. And here you can see it says uh, Wix members area. And this is a free app that's provided by Wix. And it provides a basic infrastructure for managing members and it connects with all the other business apps and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to the site. And once we do that, you will see that, one moment please, if we go over here into, ah, there we go. So if we go over here into pages and menu, then you can see here that we have this new members area and we have this one uh, private member page here. This might look slightly different than what you have on your site if you installed this app sometime in the past because I, as I was kind of playing around with this, I noticed that it is quite different from my previous experience using the Wix members area. There have been a few changes here. Uh, it, like for example, when you used to initially install the app, so you would have quite a few pages here that some could be deleted, some couldn't be. Uh, and now it's built so that all these pages are private and the activating the public pages works quite differently through the dashboard. I'm not going to touch on it right now because we're going to be building our own uh, UI and infrastructure. If you want to learn more about the Wix members area, then you can leave a comment below and I'll consider a tutorial on that as well. Uh, but generally, this is what will be installed on your site. And it's just kind of a page that users can access and use to update their basic member information inside of the Wix members collections. So let me go over here and I'm going to turn on dev mode. Uh, so that will give us access to see what the Wix members collections look like. And I'll explain what we're going to be doing a little differently. Okay, so to turn on dev mode, we're going to go up here, uh, right up here on top and just click turn on dev mode. And now if we go over here on the left to see uh, databases, and don't worry, as I said in the introduction, this is going to be a low code tutorial. So we're really going to be using code for the very bare minimum. Just when you turn on dev mode, sometimes it gives you access to certain things that you didn't have access to before, even if you're not writing any code. So let me go over here uh, to databases. And here you can see the Wix app collections. And you can see here that we have the members collection. And if you were to add in other Wix apps like the Wix store or bookings or stuff like that, then you'd see collections here as well. And these collections are collections that are read only. So we don't have access to change these collections to add additional fields. We can sometimes uh, 
change the data in those collections using the Wix APIs, but we don't have the full flexibility that we might want in terms of managing the data here. So for example, if I go over here and I open up one of these collections, so for example, the public data, so we can see the information that would be part of the member's public profile if you were using the Wix members area. And we have some basic fields here, but it's very likely that you would want to have different fields for your member that aren't included here. And you're just kind of limited in terms of adding additional fields, right? That's something that we can't do here with a Wix app collection. And that's really one of the main incentives for creating this custom member profile area experience. Okay, one important thing to note here is that if you take a look at any one of these collections and you go over here to manage fields, and you open this ID field over here that's usually hidden, then what you can see over here is an ID. So this is pretty standard with all of the Wix collections. Every new item has an ID. What's unique here is that this ID is the unique member ID. So if anywhere inside of the Wix documentation uh, or any of the tutorials or anything, you see a mention of member ID. So that's this ID over here, and it'll be the same inside of the private member data, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm not sure that we'll necessarily need it now because we're doing a low code tutorial, but if you decide to go further and add additional code to your website that requires interaction with the member ID, just know that that is where it's stored. And just so you have a little better understanding of how the Wix member app infrastructure and authentication system works. So the first step for a lot of things, but also for our custom uh, member profiles is going to be organizing the data and the CMS collections. So initially, we're going to create one CMS collection that's going to serve as our member data, our member profiles. Uh, you may want to choose, like Wix has done, to separate also between public data and private data, or you can store it all in one collection, but that would require you to have slightly more advanced controls and use some code uh, in the back end in order to decide what data to display publicly and not. I'm going to, for now, assume that all of the data inside of the these custom member profiles that we're creating is going to be public data. So data that anybody can view. And to, in order to create that collection, we're going to go over here to CMS. We're going to go to your collections, and I'm going to click here to create a collection. And I'm going to click start from scratch. And here you can name your collection, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I do recommend not calling it just members because that sometimes can create some confusion between that and the actual Wix app member app um, collections. Uh, if, yeah, if you're using them both in your code, for example, um, but it's really up to you. You can call it members. There's nothing stopping you from it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to call it profiles. Okay. Just to be a little more clear as to what the purpose of it is and to differentiate it from the native Wix system. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead here and click create. And now essentially we have full reign to create whatever we want and add whichever fields we want to these profiles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in a few fields here just by clicking over here to add field. And I'm going to add a text field. And I'm going to add here, let's say first name. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to add in another text field. And I'm not going to go and explain about all these different field types here. I do have some other tutorials about the CMS and collections in general, if you want to check them out. Um, but one of the advantages of creating our custom member profiles is that we really have access now to all of these different data types and not just the limited data types that Wix allows within their different member uh, areas and profiles. So I'm going to go in and add another text field here just for last name. And let's also add in an image. And that will be, let's say, for the profile picture. So I'm going to add in here, uh, let's say, profile picture. And I did something here that <laughs> I generally don't recommend doing. Um, so for example, this is the profiles collection. So it's a little redundant here to write profile picture. It could just be 
picture or like icon or image or something like that. Uh, this would be maybe worthy of a name if like this, if for example, we also had, let's say a cover picture and a profile picture. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of going against my own conventions here, but yeah, just for clarity's sake. And uh, let's add in a few more fields. So let's see what other fields we can add in here. So we can add in, for example, a document field, which allows the user to upload some kind of document that they want to provide for other people. Um, we could add in, let's say, a Boolean field that they can mark yes or no. Um, so let's say, let's choose field type. I'll say here, let's say above 21. Okay, let's say that's an important piece of information for this for these profiles here. Uh, we can also add in a date field. So let's go over here and look for, let's say, date, choose field, and this can be, let's say, birthday. A little redundant if we're also doing, you know, above 21 or not, but let's uh, go ahead and add that in. This is really just all a demonstration. I mean, you can add, you know what fields you need for your uh, member profile. Uh, I think that's sufficient. I'm just going to make one small change here is that I don't really need this title field. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this my primary field, okay, right over here. And that will allow me to essentially delete this title field. It's just something that irks me to have like this empty title field on the side when I'm not using it. If you're using it, good for you. You can go ahead and use it. Okay, so we set up our fields inside of the collection. And the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we have the correct permissions on the collection. So to set the permissions for the collection, we're going to go over here to more actions. And then right over here, you can see uh, permissions and privacy. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a click. And here we can determine essentially four factors about our collection, who can view the content of the collection, who can add to the collection, like create new items, who can delete content, so completely remove items, and who can update content, so make changes to each item, essentially editing. So since these are going to be public facing member profiles, we want anyone to be able to view the content. So this makes sense for us. If this was private information, then you would want to set it to site member author. So only the person who is a site member that actually created that item in the collection has access to view the content of that and anybody above him. So also let's say a website admin would be able to, but I'm gonna set this to anyone for now. In terms of adding content, so here we want to allow not anyone to add content, but only people who are site members. And here's where things start to get a little sticky with the terminology, because if this is the member profiles, then are they technically a member before they've created their member profile? So you have to remember that all of the Wix settings will be with reference to the Wix member area and the Wix member system. So essentially, if what determines if they're a site member or not is if they have signed up through the Wix sign up or login on your website. And it could be that that is, it will be that that is a initial stage that comes before they actually create this custom member profile that you're setting up here. Okay, so in terms of that, we're going to want to make sure that anybody who's creating one of these custom member profiles is already a Wix member so that we can link between that membership and their profile and make sure that a you know, let's say when they're logged in, they'll be able to edit the profile and make changes, etc. So I'm going to change this over here to site member. And in terms of deleting content, so this is a decision you'll have to make. Um, you can set it to admin. So only admins will be able to, let's say, remove member profiles. If you want to give more access to people in terms of how they control their own data, then you can set this to, let's say, site member author. I'm going to leave it at admin. We're not really going to be talking about it so much, so it's not so relevant for this tutorial. Uh, in terms of updating content, so here's uh, another really important part. So essentially, we're going to want to let each member edit their own profile, but we're not going to want to let other members edit their other members' profiles. We're not going to want to let random people update the profiles, and uh, we will want to let admins, let's say, but that is always provided for admin. So we're going to set here to site member author. Okay, and that essentially means the author, the owner of that item in the CMS 
can make updates to it. So essentially the member that the profile belongs to. And let me just show you, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click here, save. Let me just show you where that information is stored in the collection. So if you remember, we talked about the hidden fields before. So if I go over here to manage fields, and so before we talked about the ID system, the system ID, but here you'll see there's another one called owner. And owner, if I go ahead and toggle that on, okay, you'll see if I go ahead and add an item to the collection that it automatically populates here with an ID. And this ID is the member ID of the member that created this item if a logged in member created the item if it's not a logged in member then it's a little more complex i'm not going to dive into it now but that's also one of the reasons we want to verify that there's somebody a member that's logged in so that we know what the member id is what the owner is of this item inside of the collection so now that we have set up our data collection we're ready to start building out the ui so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create a page that will serve as the account area or the dashboard of members to create and edit their member profiles. So I'm gonna go over here and add a page. It's gonna be a blank page. And as soon as that gets added in here, awesome, I'm going to call it dashboard. Okay, you can name it whatever you want, whatever is relevant to you. And this, uh, in terms of the permissions of this page, if I go over here into settings, and then over here to permissions, I'm going to wanna to make sure that this page is for members only because people who are not members won't be able to successfully interact with this page. If they go onto the page, it really won't do anything because we're gonna set up the page in a way that it's only relevant for members, but we just wanna pre prevent that kind of bad user experience of them landing on a page that they can't use. So I'm going to set this page to members only. That way, if they head to the page, it'll be very clear to them that that page is not for them. And I'm also going to hide this page from the menu just uh, so that you can't navigate to it by accident if you're not logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and click hide from the menu. Uh, this is also optional. You could just leave it in the menu. And if they navigate to it by accident, then they just realize that they need to become a member to access that page. There's no right and wrong here. It's just different options for user experience as many of the things in this tutorial are going to be. So now that we set up the settings for the page, we're ready to start building out our dashboard. And essentially this dashboard is going to be a custom form, which allows the user to either create their profile if they haven't done so yet, or update their profile if they already have one. And I have some other videos about custom forms. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that and also explore different ways that this would be possible um, with different levels of, I don't think it's possible completely without code in this case, but from low code to high code, uh, let's call it, then you can check out um, some of my other custom form tutorials. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and start adding in some input elements. So I'm going to go here to add elements. And I'm going to look here for input and note here that if you don't see this input option, then you may need to turn dev mode on, which we did earlier. Uh, so if you, again, don't see input over here, then you'll want to go back up here to dev mode and make sure dev mode is on. Uh, once we're here in input, we can select the inputs that correspond essentially to the data types of the fields that we set up in the CMS. So I'm going to go ahead here and add in, let's say this text input over here. And I'm going to go into settings and I'm just going to change this to, let's say, add your last name. Okay, just to be clear. And in this tutorial, I'm not focusing on design at all. So please, I'm not saying my design skills are like phenomenal, but I can do a little better than what I'm going to be showing you here. Um, so yeah, really, we're focusing on functionality and I entrust the design to you. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Uh, so here we have one input for last name. I'm going to copy paste that. I'm going to try and copy paste that. I am going to right click, copy, and right click and paste that. There we go. Sometimes if the just control C, control V doesn't work, then you can kind of manually go in and copy paste. It usually has to do with like, if your internet's not so fast, like in my case at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to go here into settings and oh, I accidentally wrote last name. <laughs> I meant to write first name here. So I'm going to change this here to first name. 
because I'm so distracted talking to you guys, I can't concentrate on building out the form. Uh, so, okay, so we have first name, last name. Let's think of some of the other fields that we wanted to put in. So we had a Boolean for like over 21, if you remember. And so for that, I'm going to look for a radio box. Or so either you can have, well, let's do checkbox instead. You could use radio box, I guess. No, radio would not be a good idea for Boolean. For Boolean, we're going to want to use checkboxes and with a single selection here. So here we have an 18 plus one. Uh, I'll just click this first one because it's kind of consistent with our design. And I'm going to change this to, let's say, over 21. And if this is checked, then it will indicate that they're over 21. Uh, we also had a birthday field, so let's add in a uh, date and time. Uh, and I'm just going to add in a date selector. It always annoys me that there isn't one that's like very consistent with this design, but I'll add in this purple one here. Uh, and this will be for our birthday. If you want, you can add in like, uh, let's say a field title. So I'll just write here birthday or birthday. Birthday. Awesome. And the last thing that we wanted to add in was an option to upload an image for a profile picture. So I'm going to go here again to add elements and I'm going to look for one of these upload buttons over here. And I'm just going to select one again. So this one is somewhat consistent with my design or lack of. Uh, and I can change here in the settings just to say, let's say, profile picture. And uh, now what we can do is we can, yeah, make sure that it's an image, the number of files that you want people to upload. Uh, again, if you want some of these fields to be required, you can set them as required. Uh, this is all kind of more surrounding stuff regarding forms, so I'm not going to get into it too much. Uh, last thing we're going to need here is a button. And I'm going to add that in. And this is going to be a save button. So let me go ahead and change this and click save. And here uh, what we'll do is add in a title just so that everything is really clear here. I'll add in a heading two. And I'll say here, um, member profile. Yeah, I guess this could technically be a heading one. Yeah, awesome. So this is the inputs of a form that will allow us to what I want to do here is essentially allow the user to both create a member profile if they haven't got haven't created one yet, and to update their member profile if they already have one. So the next step is going to be adding in a data set. I'll let you know now that there are some more UI elements that we're going to need to add in. But first, I want to add in the data set and show you how to connect it basically before we move on to talk about the other surrounding UI elements that we're going to need to add in. So in order to add in a data set, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here again to CMS. And I'm going to go to Add Content Elements. And here you can see we have data set. I'm going to add that in. And for those of you who are not familiar with data sets, uh, I recommend getting familiar with them. But they are essentially a portal between a collection in the CMS and elements on your website, on your, on your, in the editor, in your canvas. And it's an element that you don't see when you actually publish the site. So they won't, nobody will be able to see this. It's only in the editor. And this is something that's slightly different in Wix Studio. So I'm going to point that out in a moment as soon as we're done con connecting all the stuff here uh, to the data set. So in terms of connecting to the data set, the first thing we're going to do is go here into the data set settings. And this is actually quite important here for how this is set up. So try and pay attention. <laughs> Uh, so here we are going to choose the collection that we're connecting the data set to. So that's going to be our profiles collection. And you can change the data set name. It won't really change anything in terms of functionality, just in terms of recognizing it uh, on the screen. And here in terms of data set mode, we're going to set it to read and write. So that means that all the elements that we connect to it will be able to both read from the data set, from the data collection from the CMS and write which is essentially making updates, okay? And we're only gonna be looking at one item at a time because each member only has one profile. 
And if you're creating a system with multiple profiles and stuff like that, then you might want a slightly different setup over here. But I'm assuming that each member only has one profile. And I'm going to apply a filter. And this filter is quite important. This filter right over here is going to make sure that we're only displaying and changing the data of the actual logged in member. So if we go over here, we're going to select a field and we're going to select this owner field right over here, which I explained back in the collection, if you remember. And we're going to say that the condition is that is logged in. OK, so that essentially means that we're only going to display an item that's owned by that logged in member. And since there's only one item in the collection that matches each member, it'll be their member profile. And now essentially that we've done, we finished setting up the settings of the data set, we're going to go ahead and connect between each of these elements and the data set. So I'm going to go ahead and just click each one. They should have this squiggly line between two dots connect to the CMS. And we can connect since there's only one data set on the page, Wix kind of defaulted to that one. But the value we can set, so this is going to be connected to the first name, and this is going to be connected to the last name, and this is going to be connected to collection content. Okay, we're not using it to filter, we're actually going to collect information, uh, and it's going to be connected to profiles data set and above 21. The birthday is going to be connected to birthday and profile picture is going to be connected to profile picture. OK, so pretty straightforward. And here for our save button, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to an action and the, the action that it's connected to is going to be submit. OK, and submit behaves differently depending on what the data set is. So if it's a right data set, then it'll insert new items. If it's a re if it's a right read and write data set, then it will essentially update the items. Okay. And we can add in a success message. And this section is just kind of jumping all around here. We're going to add in a success message. And you can also, if you want, add in an error message. So if there's some reason, for example, that this doesn't work, then the user will be able to know and hopefully try again or contact you to try and figure it out. And these are both hidden until that actually that the, the, the save action actually takes place. So one thing you may have noticed as I am connecting all of these elements to the data set is that they're all grayed out. And the reason behind this is because there are no items currently inside of the collection, which belong to me the owner. So whenever you're inside of the Wix editor, you're kind of logged into the website as the admin. Uh, but even the admin here, I don't have an item that is belongs to me in that collection. And that's why it's all grayed out over here. And we'd see the same thing uh, on our live site as well. So let me just demonstrate that to you. I'm going to go over here just to verify that I like the URL here, the slug. OK, so it's slash dashboard, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead here and publish the site. And I'm going to go and view the live site and go to slash dashboard. And OK, so it's asking me to it's asking me to sign up. So if you remember, we set this to be a member only page. So this is acting as expected. So let me go ahead and I'm going to uh, log in with an account that I already created for this site. Uh, if I hadn't already done that, I could have signed up. So let me go ahead and log in with that account. So that's Aton plus tester one at the wixwiz.com and my password. Let's see if you can guess it. Uh, log in. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm here on the dashboard page and you can see just as it was in the editor, all of these are grayed out because I don't currently have an item inside of the collection. So what we're going to need to do in order to solve this is to essentially create an item in the collection before we actually let the person start updating their member profile. So in order to do that, let's head back to the editor and I'll show you what we're going to do. So before we go any further inside of the Wix Classic editor, I just want to make sure that everybody who might be following along in Wix Studio is all caught up. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about data sets, which is the primary difference between uh, what I've shown you up until now in Classic and what we have in Wix Studio. Um, so let's just kind of go through a few of the basic emotions that we did in, in Classic. Uh, so first of all, uh, we're going to want to make sure that our dev mode is on. So it's not up here, uh, but it's rather here on the side. And I'm just going to go over here and click Start Coding. So we have dev mode on. And I'm also going to add in a collection. So let me go over here to CMS and uh, My Collections and Create Collection. And this one is not really so important. I could even create with AI if I want. This is just going to be test collection because I'm not going to demonstrate the whole setting up of the form here, just some of the basic motions that you can understand how to implement what I showed you before here in Wix Studio. So I have a collection now. And now what I can go ahead and do is add in, let's say, an input element. So I'm going to go over here to add elements up here on top. And here I'm going to find input uh, under embed in social. And let me just put in a text element just as an example. And you'll see here that you have the same kind of squiggly line just with like a slightly more studio look. And uh, it says connect to CMS. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then we have this panel that opens up here on the right. And we have the option to add in a data set. So it's not really you put in that kind of data set element like we did inside of Wix Classic, but it's all through this panel here on the side. So I'm going to go ahead here and add in a data set. And when we create the data set, I have to decide which collection it's associated with and what the data set name is. And then what we can do over here, I think this is probably because I don't have any fields or anything. Um, anyway, if I want, I can go ahead and connect this to, let's say, the title field. Uh, here is where I can go in and change the data set settings. So it's really kind of small over here. Uh, so you go over here to data set settings, and this is where we can change all of the things that we changed before inside of Classic. So for example, uh, setting the data set mode uh, to read and write, setting the uh, maximum items to one, and setting up the filter that we did before. Uh, that will open up this filter panel here. Should open up the filter panel here. Uh, this is a great time to go ahead and like the video if you're enjoying so far. And let me try opening that again. We all have our moments. <laughs> I'm not going to fight it. Uh, but basically, that is where you were going to add the same filter that we added in terms of having the owner uh, logged in. Uh, so again, not too different. Uh, just know that the data sets here are managed through the side panel. Um, it does get some a little hard, in my opinion, sometimes to find these data sets. Um, but basically, if you're on the page and then you're kind of looking, OK, where are my data sets now? So you could either go in through here and just like find the data sets again, or you can go here to uh, page, select page, and then here you have all of the CMS connections for the page. And you can find all your data sets and make changes. So like, again, you don't have like an element on the screen that's like visible, uh, but rather it's here in the side panel. It has its pros and cons. I mean, sometimes in the Wix Classic, it would happen that you kind of lose the data sets and you lose track of them and they're all over the place on pages with multiple data sets. So I can see why they made this change. It just takes a little getting used to. Um, but that is, that's the major difference in terms of this tutorial between Classic and Studio. So now I'm going to hop over back to our Wix editor and continue where we left off. OK, so back here inside of the Wix editor. And now we need to solve the issue that we had where everything was grayed out because we connected it to a uh, read-write data, uh, data set, but we didn't have any items in the collection yet which we could actually read and then write to. Um, so here we reach kind of like a crossroads, and it's a good opportunity also to like expand a little bit more about what your options are here in terms of setting up these forms. So one direction that we could go is to essentially create two forms. One form would be completely for creating profiles, and that would be connected to a write-only data set. And, the other op and then the other form would be for editing the profile. 
Um, this could be good maybe if you're a little less code savvy because the option I'm going to be showing you is does require a little bit of code. Um, it's also good if you have different fields that need to be filled in in the create stage and the edit stage. Um, so let's say you have extra fields that are only in the create stage and then you can edit only a subset of those fields in the uh, edit stage. So then it might warrant two forms, even though there are other ways to solve that, like you can have you know, inputs that are collapsed and stuff like that. Um, that's uh, one option. The option I'm going to show you, I'll show you in a moment, so I don't need to explain about it too much. Uh, but a third direction that you can go is essentially the full code mode. Uh, and that would uh, entail using Wix data uh, in order to update, insert, save stuff uh, using all of the APIs. So you have here APIs that you can use to interact with the Wix collections. Uh, if you want to learn more about these options, I do recommend some of my other tutorials on the topic. Uh, we won't be del delving into it today, but just know that you do have more flexibility if you need it and want it and want to learn how to code. Uh, so that's out there, just so you know. Uh, back into the editor, uh, I'm going to show you now kind of like a middle road, and it will entail adding a new button, which is used to initiate the creation of a new profile. So let me go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to go here to add elements. And I'm going to add in a button. I'll make it blue just so that we can like tell the difference. And this will be our create profile button. So let me go ahead and change the text here. Create, whoops, don't want to be writing in Hebrew. Uh, create new profile. And I'm going to open that up like that. Awesome. And now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to the CMS. Let me go here and connect to CMS. And in terms of the click action, so we're going to be choosing instead of submit, we're going to be choosing new. And essentially what that will do is it will initiate a new item in the collection. Okay. And it's, it's slightly hackish here because new would technically be used in a scenario where we have stuff in the inputs and then we click new, it would create a new item and like create the opportunity to create a new item. I don't want to get into it too deeply. You can read the documentation. Um, I'll try and remember to add some links in the description, but also just a quick Google search will probably lead you there. Uh, but basically this will allow us to essentially create a new item in the collection, which we can then use to update. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and publish our site with this new uh, change just to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click publish. And I'm going to head over to our live site, and I'm going to give this a refresh. And now you'll see that if I click this button here, create new profile, then all these kind of light up. <laughs> They're happy to see us now. And if I go ahead and I create, add in, let's say, test, test, over 21, birthday, and I'll select, let's say, an old thumbnail as a profile picture, and go ahead and click save. It'll take a little moment for this profile picture to upload, but here you can see we got the message, your content has been submitted. So that is all working correctly. And if I go back into the editor and I head here into the collection and I go in, then we should see this uh, new profile that was created. Okay, so that is working to some extent, uh, but we do have a slight issue which I want to talk about right now. Okay, so one issue that we have here is that this create new profile button will still be there even after we create our profile. And we don't want members, as I said, to have multiple profiles at this point. So essentially what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to make sure that this button is not available to users or members that have already created a profile. So in order to tackle that, we're going to need to use a little bit of code. And essentially, the logic of what we're going to do is we're going to need to detect if this data set already has an item in it that matches the filters. So if there's already an item that belongs to the current member, then we're going to go ahead and collapse this button. 
If not, then we'll leave the button there so they can create their member profile. So let's go ahead and head into the IDE. And this is where we're going to be writing all our code. And first thing, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, these kind of comments that Wix left in here so nicely for us. And we're going to be tapping into the APIs for our data sets. And before I start writing any code, I just want to name the elements that we're going to be interacting with. So that's essentially this button and this data set. So let's start with the button. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to name this create new profile button. Just so that I can see it in my code and know what I'm interacting with in terms of the elements because button two is not so clear. Uh, and I'm going to also rename the data set because also data set one doesn't mean very much. So I'll just call this the profiles data set. If I had more than one data set on this page, I might need to create a more specific name. But for the sake of this demonstration, that should suffice. So now that I've gone ahead and done the naming, essentially what we need to do now is we need to implement logic that will detect if there is an item in this profile's data set. So in order to do that, there are several options actually. Uh, so just so that you know where to look for information, uh, here, this is the Velo reference, and it basically explains everything you can do beyond regular JavaScript in terms of interacting with the Wix system using um, Velo code. And we're going to be using these data sets uh, APIs, and we have de several different things that we can do in terms of reading the data set using code. And I'm going to use this get total count which will essentially get the total amount of items which match the criteria of the data set. And what I'm assuming is going to happen, and we'll find out in a moment, is that if I have an item already in the collection, then that will return one. And if I don't, then it will return zero. And then based on if it's one or zero, we can determine if we want to show that button or not. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's important to note one small thing that whenever we're interacting with data sets, we always want to implement our code inside and on ready for the data set. That's because it takes the data set some time to get the data from the collection. And we want to make sure that whatever logic we write happens after that data has been retrieved. So let me go here back into the editor. And here inside of the code editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function here outside of my on ready just to keep everything nice and clean. So I'm going to call this function and let's call this uh, check if member has profile. OK, I like really long explanative uh, function names. And here what we're going to do is first we're going to say if we're going to check if the data set is ready, as I said before. So we're going to have here profiles data set dot on ready. And here we're opening up something called a callback function. So it's a function that's going to run after the profiles data set is ready. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the count. We're going to want to get the amount of items that matches, as I explained earlier. I'm not going to explain again. So basically, let's say here uh, const count equals two. And this will be profiles data set dot get current what was it called get total count okay and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check what that count is so here what i'm going to say you could say here for example if count equals to zero okay or something like that but essentially what i want to do is just say if count so that means that will be true in the account in the account that count is bigger than zero okay so this writing if count is essentially the same as writing if count is bigger than zero okay it's just a little more concise because zero will have a value of false don't want to get into it too much but yeah if it's easier for you to understand then you can just write this and that's totally legitimate because it's more important for you to understand your code than to save three characters in your code uh, so there if count and then we need to essentially collapse our button. So we're going to have the create new profile button dot collapse. 
uh, and you can use either collapse or hide. Uh, hide will just make it disappear, and collapse will actually make the space that it occupies disappear. Here it doesn't really matter whoops, too much because it's right side by side by this, so I don't think collapse will actually change anything too much, uh, but let's find out. And this is really all the code that we need. Uh, the last thing I just need to make sure to do is actually call this function inside of the onReady. The onReady is the code that runs when the page is ready, okay? Uh, and just one small note here, you could also implement opposite logic. So you can start this button off as collapsed. And you can expand it if the member needs to use it. Both are pretty legitimate. Usually I would actually go with the second option that I explained, but this one was just a little more concise to do at the moment. So let me go ahead and I'm going to publish the site and let's see if this is working at all. Okay. So here I am back on the live site. And as you can see, uh, I refresh the page and the button is not showing. Okay, so that's generally a good sign. Uh, I also took the liberty of adding in a log uh, while we were off, off camera. And you can see here that I'm logging the count. Okay, so count one. Okay, it's just as I said before. And I just want to show you that this will also work in the other situation where count is zero. So let's head back into the editor. And this is the console log that I added in, by the way, just so for transparency's sake. And uh, if I go here into the CMS, your collections, and I open up profiles collection, and I'm just going to delete this item that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete. And now I'm going to go and refresh the page over here. And you can see here now we have count zero. Okay, and the create new profile uh, button is there. Okay, so I find this to be a good balance between um, no code and code. I don't think that the code that we implemented is overly complicated. Um, and it really lets you have everything just here on one page instead of creating two separate pages for create and update, assuming that you didn't have a special reason for doing that otherwise. Um, so now that we've done that, let's head on and talk about how we can essentially allow the member to access this page once they have logged into the website. Okay, so now that we've created this lovely uh, member profile page, which allows users to create and update their profiles, let's talk a little bit about how the users actually will get here. And um, initially, this might seem straightforward because you just it's just a page on your website, so you need a, some button or something that will link to it, and you're all good. Um, but this is actually slightly a broader issue, and it has to do with this element that we have up here, which is the element that comes with the Wix members area by default. Uh, if I show it to you here in the editor, uh, this is what it looks like over here. It's a member login bar. Uh, you can add it in from the elements um, menu as well, and you can edit it and change how it looks and stuff like that. But essentially what it does is it gives your member uh, several options. So one is that if your member is currently logged out, this will allow them to sign up for the website or log in. If they're logged in like I am now, so it will allow them to log out and also to access their My Account page, which is the native Wix members account page. So that is where we are in a slight conflict because it's quite likely that if we built out our own membership profile system, we're not using this default one that was created by Wix. And so we don't essentially want users to accidentally navigate to this page. Unfortunately, this is not a page that we can delete from the website after we have created the Wix members area. Um, so that's a bit of an issue for us. If I'm putting a little asterisk here, if you are building out this solution completely by code, you technically don't need to add in the Wix members app in order to access the features of membership. Um, to be completely honest, I haven't tried it with no code. It may be possible that you don't need to install the Wix members area at all. But yeah, if you want, you can experiment with that and let me know how it goes. Um, but yeah, but I'm going to assume that you do have the Wix members area installed on your website. And you just want to get rid of this element up here 
And essentially we need to allow people to log in, log out and navigate to this, not this, but our dashboard page. So this page all through some kind of functionality or menu system that we're going to build by ourselves. So like with many things, <laughs> there are several options for how to implement this. I'm going to be showing you one way and giving you some tools. Uh, you can decide how you want to implement it by yourself. It's going to require a little bit of code uh, just to understand who is logged in and who's logged out and display a custom UI based on that. So let's start off by getting rid of this login bar, um, which Wix is very concerned about. <laughs> Uh, and that's really what we're trying to achieve here. And I'm going to add in two buttons instead of that login bar. So I'm going to go over here and let me add in two buttons. Let's add in this button. And I'll add in another button that looks a little different. Let's say this button. Okay. And one of these buttons is going to be for navigating to this dashboard page. So let me go ahead and change this. And I'm going to say here dashboard. And I'm going to make this button hidden by default. So let me go over here. And since these buttons are both in the header, uh, we need to write the code that interacts with them on something called the master page. And I'm going to open it through that button right over there. You can also navigate to the master page by going up here to page code. And then you see here that we have master page. And this is essentially code that runs on every single page of your website because the header is on every single page of your website that's displaying the header. Uh, so let me go ahead and change the name of this dashboard button. So let me change it to dashboard button. And I'm also going to set it so that it is hidden by default. Okay, so that means only if I show it, then people will be able to see it. Uh, next, let's deal with this button up here. And this is going to be our login logout button. And this is going to be a button with superpowers It's going to do two things. Uh, it'll either log members in or log them out. Or I should I should say, sign, sign, should I sign them in or sign them out, sign up, log out. Anyway, uh, you can decide what terminology you want to use, uh, but essentially uh, that's what it's going to do. And I'm going to change the text and icon here. So I'll start it off by default as log in. Okay, so the, the base state that I'm setting things up in is that we're assuming that the user is logged out. That's why the dashboard button is hidden and it says here log in. And I'll just change this, uh, the naming of the button here to log in, log out log out button. Awesome. So now that we've set up our buttons and we've also done some naming, we're ready to implement some code here inside of the Velo IDE. And we're going to be using an API uh, called the Wix members front end API again back in this Velo reference that I showed you earlier. And we're going to be using the authentication part of this API. And specifically, we are going to be using logged in. Okay, so this is an, a method that allows us to understand if a member is logged in or not. And we're also going to be using on log in and on log out, which are two events that fire off when a user either logs in or logs out. So let's go ahead and implement first checking if the member is logged in or not. Okay, so let's go ahead back to our editor and start writing the code for this logic. Okay, so here back in the editor, and I have the code panel open. And the first thing I'm going to do here is import the library. So I'm going to go over here and import authentication from Wix members front end. Okay, and now we can use this authentication uh, method function inside of our code. And I'm going to create a new function here again, just to keep things nice and clean. And this function, bring that up. And this function is going to handle the rendering of the login logout UI, depending on if the user is logged in or logged out. So let me go ahead and create a new function. And I'll call this render login logout 
uh, UI. Okay. And again, you can call the function whatever you want. I often also change the names of things as my code develops, uh, just because you kind of learn new things about the structure of your code and what would be a more clear and less clear name. Uh, so render login logout UI. And what we're going to do here, first thing we're going to need to understand is if the member is logged in or not. So let's say here const logged in equals two. And here we're going to have authentication dot logged in. And we call this like a function. And you can see that this looks very much like what we have here in the documentation, right? So const is logged in equals authentication dot logged in. And now we're going to do something very similar here where we're going to write some conditional logic based on if we're logged in or not. Okay, so let me go back to our editor. And I'm going to say here, if logged in, then what we're going to need to do is two things. We're going to want to set our uh, login logout button dot label should be equal to logout. Okay. And what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to render our dashboard button. So dashboard button dot show show <laughs> sorry i had forgotten for a second if i had collapsed it or if i had hidden it uh, but then i just took a look and i see that it was hidden uh, so dot show and let's say that if we are not logged in okay so if we're not logged in then what we're going to need to do is we're going to change the login logout button dot label will be equal to log in. Okay, so essentially the opposite, and we will hide the dashboard button. Okay, so when are we going to want to call this function? So every time essentially we load a page, we're going to want to call this function. So let me go ahead and call this function right over here. And this is only the visual aspect of it. So that you might have realized this as I'm writing the code, but changing the label of the button uh, doesn't actually change what the button does. So in addition to changing the label, we also have to change how this button behaves based on if the user is logged in or not. But that is something we're going to be doing inside of the actual on click for the button. So let's go ahead and just test this very basic thing that we set up so far. So I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. And I'm going to refresh this over here. And awesome. So now you can see here that the dashboard uh, button is showing and this button now says uh, log out. Obviously, these both don't do anything yet because we haven't hooked them up to anything. Uh, but the next steps that we're going to take is is to change the functionality of this logout login button based on if the person is logged out and logged in. And we're also going to re-render the UI whenever somebody either logs in or logs out. Okay, so back here inside of our Velo IDE, I'm going to zoom right in. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding the on-click event listener for our login logout button. So that's going to be dot on-click. And this is going to be a callback function that runs whenever we click on that login logout button. And the first thing that we're going to do whenever we click on the button is we're going to check if the person is logged in or not. So I'm just going to copy this line of code right here and put that right over there. So we're going to check if they're logged in and we're going to write a similar logic. So we're going to say if logged in, then we're going to do something and else we're going to do something else. So if they're logged in, what we want to do is essentially log out the user. Okay, remember if we're logged in, that becomes the logout button. If we're logged out, that becomes the login button. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say um, authentication dot logout. And here inside of the else statement, what we're gonna say is authentication dot login. Dot, not dot login, let's see dot prompt login 
Okay, let me explain what the difference is there between the two. I was I was taken aback for a second. So login is a method that you can use to actually log somebody in with their email and their password, whereas prompt login means to show the user the native Wix login screen so that they can input their password and email and whatnot so that they can log in. So it's not actually, we're not actually logging them in, we're just taking them to the place where they're going to log in. Okay, so slight, slight nuance there. Um, but that's in terms of the button. Okay. And the last thing that we want to do here is to set up the logic for if a user logs in or logs out. So I'm just going to add that here. Um, let me add that. I'll add that over here. So authentication dot on login, we're going to render login logout UI and authentication dot on logout. We're also going to render login logout UI. And because of how we built this function, that it's conditional on the logged in status, we can essentially call the same function in each situation and it will behave differently according to what the user has just done if they've logged in or logged out. Last but not least, I'm just going to connect our dashboard button to the dashboard page. We can do that here via the no code uh, page linker. And I'm just going to choose my dashboard page, click done. And let's go ahead and publish the site. And I'll see you on the live site so we can test it out. Okay, so here we are on the live site. And let's try out uh, our logout button. So I'm going to go ahead and click logout. And now, uh, so uh, since this page is member protected, so it automatically asks me to sign up. But if I was to go, for example, to our home page, then you can see now that I can only see the login button. And if I click the login button, then it will take me to this page, which is the login page. I also took the liberty here of just adding in a console log again. So you can see what this looks like. Uh, so you can see here uh, logged in false. Okay, this is inside of the login logout render login logout UI function. Um, and if I go ahead, and I'm just going to go click log in, I'm going to click log in over here, log in with email, and let me log in back into that account that I created. So tester one at G, uh, the wixwiz.com and password login. And uh, so we can see here now that logged in is true. Okay, right over here. And we can see that the UI is now displaying the logged in member UI, where I can click over here and go to my dashboard page. And I can go ahead and log out if I want, I'm not going to log out again, but you saw that it was working before. Okay, so that is how we can set up our own unique kind of login logout experience in terms of how we allow the user to reach those situations uh, and how we can direct them to the dashboard page and conditionally display some sort of link or button to the dashboard page, depending on their logged in status. The next thing we're going to do is talk about how we can actually display these member profiles to other users if we want to. So in order to build out the public facing member profile, so essentially pages that can be viewed by either all members or all visitors to the website, and that are controlled by the data that the user edits and puts into their dashboard, we're going to be using something called dynamic pages. And I'm really just going to show like a really quick implementation of this here just to give you kind of a lead on it. Uh, because most of this is actually just a matter of designing it the way that you want. Uh, I also have other um, tutorials that explain how to use dynamic pages quite in depth. So you can take a look at that uh, if you want to get a better understanding. Uh, you also, if you want to go super advanced, you can also use router pages for this, which I recently uh, released a tutorial about. Um, so th there are, here again, there are multiple options. Um, but basically what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, I have gone into my profiles collection and I've added in a few uh, mock kind of people into my profiles. And uh, in order to turn this into dynamic pages, all we need to do is go to CMS to your collections and then here click on these three dots right over here and we can add a dynamic page. Okay. 
And when we add in a dynamic page, so we have an option between list and item. So if I was to go in and add in item pages, essentially that would be the equivalent of adding in a public facing member profile for each one of my users. So you can see here, um, this is Jim Halpert. And I have all these pictures, uh, I have Asians because I'm in Vietnam. So all the stock footage in Wix like became Asians. Um, but yeah, so Jim, if, if you've seen that episode, <laughs> this reminds me of the episode of Asian Jim, for those of you who have seen it. Uh, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, leave me a comment below. Um, uh, but anyways, back to, back to our topic. Um, yeah, so here, this is like the equivalent of a member profile, and all of these are connected uh, via uh, a data set here, which is linked to one specific item in the collection. So this is like a template page that's used to display the data from uh, each item inside of our profiles collection. And here inside of the editor, you can also kind of go through um, the different people and just kind of see what it would look like with different data. Uh, and if you want to also create a page which allows you to navigate between the different profiles, um, we can essentially go over here and we can add in a new, sorry, a new dynamic page. So right over here, add dynamic pages, and you can add in uh, something called a list page. Okay, this is actually something that you can totally also do just by adding in a new page to your website. You don't specifically have to use the dynamic pages list page, but it could be a little easier if you don't have much experience. Um, and this kind of gives you a ready made list that you can work with like a repeater that's connected to data. So it's an easier starting point if you don't have a lot of experience. But if you kind of know how to use repeaters and data sets and whatnot, it's pretty much the same thing as setting that all up on your own regular page of the website. Uh, so let me just go ahead and add this to site just so you can see. Uh, sorry, I need to select the collection, the profiles collection. I'm going to go ahead and add that to site. Awesome. And I'm going to go and I'm going to add in a site menu as well, just so I have a slightly easier time uh, navigating over here. So let me search for menu. Where's the site menu? <laughs> Uh, let me find that right over here. Uh, da, 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 menu and anchor. I'll just drag in a site menu. This is just for me. Just so when I'm demonstrating things to you guys, I can see it. So this, this is the profiles page that's linked to the list page of the profiles, essentially. Uh, so let me go ahead and publish this. And let's take a look and see what this looks like on our live site. Essentially, here you can already see that it's kind of a list of all of the members, okay, all of the member profiles, I can change this, I can say, our members. Awesome. Publish that again. And if we take a look at it on the live site, just give this a refresh. And I'll go over to the profiles page. Then here, if I click read more, obviously, you can change like what it says here in the button and whatnot. Uh, but if I click, it should. What I thought would happen is that it would navigate to uh, one of the member profile pages. We might have to just connect that ourselves. Connect to CMS, profiles, click action, navigate to profile item. Okay, again, I'm not... I'm not going into depth here in terms of explanations because this I really cover this very much in depth in my dynamic uh, pages tutorial. Uh, just going to go ahead and publish that. And hit refresh right over here. And then click read more. There we go. And now it went to Jim. Okay. Uh, so that's that's a basic, you know, method to set up the uh, public facing uh, profiles. Uh, what I want to show you is how we can connect between our dashboard page and the public profile, because I want to allow the user to easily navigate to their own public profile page. Let's say you make an edit, so you quickly want to go check and make sure that your profile looks good. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you how to set up next.
Okay, so this is really not too complicated. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do, again, I'm back here on the dashboard page. Uh, I can even change this to say, let me change this to say dashboard, <laughs> just to be a little more clear. Yeah, that's better. As I said, naming conventions change. Uh, not that this is a naming convention, but anyway, let me hop in. I'm going to add in a new button here. Uh, let's add in, let's say this button. And I'm going to add it here. I'll add it here. Should I add it after, next to the save? Or should I add it up here on top? Very important UI UX decision. Uh, essentially, this is going to be the button which allows us to uh, view public profile. Let me make that a little wider just so they can see the, all the words. Awesome. And we're going to be connecting this to the CMS because we already have this profile data set here set up. So we don't even need to add in another data set. I'm just going to go over here and connect to the CMS. And in terms of click action, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the profiles items page. So the same thing that we kind of did in that repeater before. Uh, but here, since we only have one item selected via the filters that we set up, it should go to that current members profile page. Uh, and we can either do it in, let's do it in a new window, because uh, I think that would be the best UX actually. And yeah, that looks good. So let me go ahead and publish that. And I'm going to go here to the dashboard. And I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. Okay, so I don't have a uh, all those profiles that I set up were not mine. So let me go ahead first, I'll create a profile. Uh, I'll just call this test test. I won't even, oh, should I pick a profile picture? Sure, I'll pick a profile picture. I'll go ahead, I'll click save. Uh, now that we did that, I actually realized that we have one slight flaw in the setup of our uh, page here is that we didn't collapse this button after we actually save a new profile. So we only did it like if I refresh this page, but not after the save. So let's put that as a mental note for something that we need to fix. Uh, but let's first go ahead, I'm gonna refresh this page. And uh, let's say, go view public profile. Awesome, so test, test. And we don't have anything displaying like the birthday or the over 21, but here you can see the user I just created. And let's say if I go over here and now I make a change to my profile. So I change it to say, let's say, uh, test 25234. Uh, and I go ahead and I click save. And now I go and I click view my public profile. You can see here now it's test 234. So we created like a quite a convenient system for people to go ahead and make a change and check out their public profile immediately after that. So that's pretty, pretty nice. So let's just go in and fix that little uh, mistake that we had, that we had, that I had, <laughs> uh, and that you had if you didn't catch it while you were following along with me, uh, that we need this button to disappear as soon as we create the member profile for the first time. Okay, so let me go ahead and hop into the editor and we'll do that together real quick. So there are, again, a few ways I can think of tackling this. Uh, one way that we can ch try out is to like hide the button as soon as it's clicked. So when somebody clicks that button, it will, um, it will hide. Another option would be to tap into the events from the data set. So like we can say that whenever the data set has an on save event, then we will uh, hide that button essentially. So let me start with the on save event because I think it's a little more elegant than just hiding it whenever it's clicked. Um, so let's go ahead over here. Uh, again, I'm on the dashboard page inside the Velo IDE and I'm going to uh, select our data set. So let's say, uh, what was it called? Profiles data set. And here we're going to say dot on and here we have after save. So this is an event that should run whenever the data set saves. And here there's actually something that I'm not so sure about if this is going to run after the new event. Okay, because when we click the create new profile button, it runs the new event or the new action on the data set. So I'm not sure if that is included here, but we're about to find out. Uh, so let me go ahead and open up the callback function here. And what we're going to say is that when 
that runs, we are going to essentially, we're going to want to collapse the create new profile button. So let's do create new profile button dot collapse. Let's try that out. Again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Like if this works, I do think it's the more elegant solution. Uh, but if it doesn't, then it doesn't. And we'll have to do the other one. Uh, so let's go ahead and first I'm going to get rid of my new profile that I just created. Because uh, we want to start off from a point where I don't have a profile. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Close these two tabs over here and give this page a nice refresh. Okay, so let me go ahead and click create new profile. So it didn't collapse the button just yet. Let's see if it collapse, collapses after I click save. Because here I don't think that there's any, yeah, there's no damage here in I think clicking again and again. Uh, I don't think that'll create multiple items in the collection. So let me just try here and click save, test, test. Uh, let me select a profile picture again. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. There we go, and it disappeared. Okay, so it didn't disappear for the uh, when as soon as the button is clicked, but it does disappear once you save your initial profile, which kind of makes sense actually. Uh, and if we head back here into the editor, let's just make sure that we didn't accidentally add in multiple profiles or something like that. And no, I only see one that was added in here. So I think that that is a pretty good solution. So that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you today in terms of creating custom member profiles. Um, this is really just the starting point. I mean, the sky's the limit. You can really go crazy with this and build out pretty advanced stuff uh, and create your own complete custom web app uh, using Wix and custom member profiles. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, if you did, find that thumbs up button and give it a click just so that I know. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, if there are any kind of follow up tutorials you would like to see suggestions, you just want to say hi, you can do that in the comments below. And if you want to see more tutorials uh, like this one, uh, more slightly more advanced tutorials about code and just about hear about Wix in general on a weekly basis, uh, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time.